Hi guys, Dane here, and today, oh, and Biggie's there as well, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Faith by Peter James, so as always, I'm going to start by reading the blurb, and then I'm going to go in and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll come back at the end to tell you what I think, so, to Ross Ransom, perfection is more than just an ideal, it is living, for Ransom is one of the most successful, and certainly one of the richest, plastic surgeons in the business, even his wife is perfect, after all, he has spent hours in surgery getting her that way. So when his wife becomes ill and turns her back first on conventional medicine and then on her marriage as she seeks help from a charismatic alternative therapist, Ransom feels bitter and betrayed. And if he can't have his wife, then why should anyone else? Faith is a terrifying thriller which shows what happens when our belief in people gets out of control. So yeah, um, all of the characters in this are pretty fundamentally unlikable to be honest. Uh, this main character, he uses his wife as like his portable, um, well, I will get to it. I think there were some tabs on that. Quote here, life's a bitch. And then thought faith, it's not that you die. You just start without even noticing it to become someone you never wanted to be. We have a reference to men are from Mars and women are from Venus, which I think Peter James referenced in the last Peter James book I read as well. I'm guessing his wife read it. Someone takes a pregnancy test too. And that also happened in the last Peter James book. Just weird little coincidences, you know? And we have a reference to, uh, she, it goes, At times she had felt like Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady, or as Ross would have preferred, Shaw's Pygmalion, also ticked off the list of the things I've gone to see. He wanted her to be able to hold her own at any dinner table. And looking at gravestones, and I thought this was an interesting thought, it said, um, Then she looked up at him. Does death fascinate you? He stopped and pointed down at the headstone of William Percival Ledbetter. You know what fascinates me? It's the dash. That little mark between the dates. I look down at someone's grave and I think, that dash represents a human being's entire life. You and I are living out our dashes right now. It's not important when someone was born or when they died. What matters is what they did in between with their lives. And all we have here in this graveyard are just thousands of anonymous dashes. That makes me sad. I have a friend who thinks like that. We have someone here who uh, gets burns and the nurse is like, well, we, she has a lot of burning to her, uh, to her skin and, and we breathe through her skin so her lungs are damaged. And I'm like, what? They even tested that on like Mythbusters or something because there was a rumor that somebody had been painted head to toe in body paint and because they and like you're supposed to leave the, the, the soles of their feet unpainted because if you paint the entire body, they'll die. They don't die. It's a load of bullshit. We have a mention of Svengali who is a character. I can't actually remember what from. Um, but yeah, my friend Dave has written a musical called Svengali about this character. This was a kind of surreal little conversation here um then she turned her head and stared hard at him stared with eyes that were focused yet sightless he looked away and as he did so she said you're gonna kill me aren't you ross why do you say that oscar wilde said every man kills the thing he loves oscar wilde was a turd burglar i don't think a man who sodomized small boys is qualified to talk about love needless homophobia there but i suppose it adds to the character you know he is a dick he is a proper dick then the, her hippie doctor says, Faith, I will get you better. You're going to get through this. Try to be strong. I'm going to send you healing thoughts that will make you strong until I see you. Thoughts and prayers. I did like this a little bit. I always think, um, I think it's brutal in books when you read about characters who've realized that they're going to die, you know? Uh, and obviously even worse when it happens to people in real life. I just think it's awful. Um, and this happens here. Spider pressed the muzzle of the heckler and kosh against the man's forehead, two inches above his nose, savouring the faint realisation that he could see dawning in the man's grey eyes, and gave the trigger a firm squeeze all the way to the back of the guard. We have a reference to Prime Minister Tony Blair, which helps to date them. Alright, and then this surgeon... Somebody asked him, Mr. Ron Mr. Ransom, would you be familiar with Occam's Razor? I've never heard of it. Should I have done, as a surgeon? Yes, you bloody well should have. I've heard of Occam's razor, I'm not a surgeon, I'm not a scholar, like, it's just a commonly known thing. But anyway, I'll read out the explanation here in case you haven't heard of it. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of Occam's razor before. William of Occam was a philosopher in the 14th century. He based scientific knowledge on experience and self-evident truths. He believed in the Aristotelian principle that one should not seek to complicate issues beyond what is absolutely necessary. His principle became known as Occam's razor. This was that any problem should be stated in its basic and simplest term. In science, the simplest theory that fits the facts of a problem is the one that should be selected. I mean, bear in mind, like, half of surgeons are, like, privately educated and stuff as well. I just don't buy that he wouldn't have heard of Occam's Razor. Uh, they, they have intercourse at one point, and uh, Peter James refers to the penis as his sex, which oh, I, I just, I don't know, it never sounds good. In fact, like, let me read this sex scene out, because... 
I don't know, sex scenes always make me laugh, but this one in particular does seem a little bit ridiculous. Slowly sinking to her knees, taking his jeans and boxes down with her, breathing in the heady smell of his warm flesh, she buried her face into the thick, luxuriant tangle of his pubic hairs, holding him in her hands, holding his beautiful, incredible, rock-hard sex in her fingers. She stroked him in long, slow, gentle movements, feeling his whole body taut as wire, listening to the breaths exploding from his throat, then pressed her lips to the moist tip of this thing, this incredible, exquisite thing, Oliver's thing, the first time she had seen another man's, touched another man's, smelled another man's since, oh my god, since so long, so long before Ross. What kind of person just puts their head into someone's pubes and smells? Factor that I wasn't aware of, but I mean, I suppose it doesn't surprise me. Uh, at Agincourt, English archers killed 8,000 Frenchmen in seven minutes. So that's over a thousand archers a minute. All right, so this bit made me chuckle. I'm gonna read this out, see if you can spot the error here. Behind him, hunched over his tiny game screen, Alex saved them all by trapping a Venusaur in a Pokeball. Right, this was published in the year 2000. Tony Blair was Prime Minister. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow were the only um, Pokemon games out. So you can't catch a Venusaur in a Pokeball. There weren't any wild Venusaurs. You had to get a Bulbasaur and evolve him up. Alright, so this bit made me chuckle. I'm going to read this out, see if you can spot the error here. Behind him, hunched over his tiny game screen, Alex saved them all by trapping a Venusaur in a Pokeball. Right, this was published in the year 2000. Tony Blair was Prime Minister. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow were the only um, Pokemon games out. So you can't catch a Venusaur in a Pokeball. There weren't any wild Venusaurs. You had to get a Bulbasaur and evolve him up. I thought uh, this was kind of fascinating. It's also quite gory as well, but uh, I assume it's true because James does his, his research. He lay on his back with his arms raised, fists clenched like a boxer. To a stranger, it might appear that this was some bizarre act of defiance against his condition, but Faith had been told by the nurse at the plastic surgery unit of this hospital, where he used to operate himself one day a week, that this was not so. It was a phenomenon in severe burns victims known as the pugilistic attitude, where the limbs remained permanently flexed due to the shortening of the flexor muscles caused by, the shrink caused by shrinkage of the skin and the muscle tissue from the heat. And then we get a call back to that uh, quote again, the uh, bit about the dash in the gravestones being what interests the uh, the character. So yeah, overall, I mean, I think it was a pretty competent thriller. It wasn't as good of a thriller as Perfect People, which I read recently, also by Peter James. And honestly, like, I don't know. Thrillers just aren't really for me, I guess. But um, I do enjoy Peter James, and I kind of watch his career with interest, so I am glad I read this. Overall, I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5, maybe. Um, it was just okay. But if, if it sounds like it might be of interest to you, then of course be sure to check it out. So there we have it. That's what I made of Faith by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.